Welcome everybody to Let's Make Art. We like to watercolor and um, you might be like, that sounds scary. It's not, it's just water and color and then you put it together on a piece of paper and that's it, that's all it is, it's not that bad. Uh, we do a different project every single week, so the one we're teaching today is Give Thanks. Woo! Wow, beautiful. Wow. <laughs> and you might be like, Sarah, who is this person sitting next to you? Well, this is Nicole. Hello, Say everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we have lettering in this project, and I am not um, a skilled lettering artist. You are good, though. Oh, thanks. Um, but Nicole does this for like her job. She's written a book called By Hand where she teaches you brush lettering on different projects and she like teaches workshops about this. So she was so nice to come down and teach us how to do some lettering for this. So how this is going to go is I'm going to show you how to do the wreath portion and then Nicole is going to go over how to do the lettering portion. And we'll say this later, but just keep in mind this is your painting. It's your life. You can do whatever you want. If you don't want lettering and you just want a beautiful wreath, do that. Okay? Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry, I kicked you. Okay, so we're going to start this off. Um, we're using three colors. We're using, um, sorry, sepia, yellow ochre, and crimson. And um, there isn't really like step, 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 step in this because essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to draw the uh, circle outline and then we're just going to go around adding little leaves and branches. So I guess. The steps would be step one, outline the circle. Step two, add leaves. Step three, lettering. Those are the steps. So I'm just going to, um, I just grabbed a bowl from the kitchen. Just whatever fits on your page. Just don't have your bowl get like too close to the edge of your paper because you don't want the leaves to like go off the edge. So I just did one that kind of fit comfortably. I'm just drawing it lightly. No, Ikea is not sponsoring us. Not yet. Not yet anyway. You guys keep watching and maybe one day. If anyone from Ikea is watching, <laughs> we wouldn't mind sponsoring. We, we wouldn't sponsoring. mind it. We wouldn't be against it. Let's just say that. So now that I have my circle, um, what you can do, I'm going to take this. If, um, if this is too dark for you, I, you can always kind of lightly erase your circle. And then that way, if you're worried about that line, you can just kind of lighten it up. So don't use a pen. Don't use a pen for this. So I still have the, you know, the soft outline of my circle. And basically what you're going to do is we're just using a round two for this painting. That's it. Just, just one little round two. And that's just because we're doing lots of thin lines, lots of detail work, and we just keeping it simple. So um, what we're going to do is grab your round two. And you just, I like to start with brown. So Nicole, just so you know, this is sepia, this is yellow ochre, and this is crimson. Cool. Okay. So I like to get my brush wet and then I kind of fill it with paint. And then I kind of like do a couple strokes to like get excess paint out. Because sometimes if your brush is filled with a lot of paint and water, then even if you're pressing lightly, you're still gonna have a thicker line. So sometimes I like kind of fill it up and then I kind of hit it back and forth to get out that excess and that way you can still get a thin line. And what I like to do is I kind of start on the left hand side of my circle and I'm just going to start putting in branches and then we just work our way around the circle. So I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to have, I'm going to put my branch in first. And so I'm kind of following the shape of my circle. And I just do it in sections. So like that's my first branch. And then, um, and remember you can change this up as you go. It's your painting, do whatever you want. Um, but I'm putting in my branch part first. And then I do little like soft branches, not soft, but like small branches coming off the side, kind of mm. like that. So there's my branch. And then I'm gonna grab my yellow ochre. Now the yellow ochre is like, just a really warm color and if you have a lot of it it can be like a really really warm brown and if you have a little bit more water it can be more like a, a yellow so i'm just going to grab some yellow ochre and i'm just going to start doing leaves just starting on the bottom and how i like to do leaves is i honestly just like to outline them and then fill it in like that 
And you're basically making like an eyeball shape. So you want a point at the top and you want it a point at where it hits the branch. Yep. And you can make them as long or as little as you want. You can change the shape as you go. And you didn't mix any colors at all, right? I'm not mixing any colors. If you want like maybe a, a darker brown, you can mix some of the antelope in with the uh, uh, yellow ochre. But I'm just kind of, what I like to do is I like to put in the yellow and then while it's still wet, I grab some of that brown and I just kind of drop it in right where that leaf meets the stem. And it's just naturally going to kind of spread out if it's wet mm. and I just let it do its spreading magic. Fun. And you just kind of keep on going up. Now, I just want to show you the difference. So this is me doing like a narrow and then back narrow. So it has that like sharp top, sharp bottom. And this is what it looks like if you don't do the narrow at the bottom. You see, like this has reads a little bit more like real leaves to me than that. So make sure you just, you just go slow and really soft pressure to get these thin lines. Now let's say you do your leaf and it's not very sharp. Like let's say I outline that. You can always go back in and sharpen it up. Oh yeah. Not That's a big a deal. Leaf. It is a crisp leaf. Crisp. You're not going to put any leaves on your little mini stem? Not yet. So that mini stem you can either use for putting leaves on or you can take your crimson and um, put little berries, which is what I'm going to do on mine. And you can alternate it. I'll probably alternate between like little leaves and berries and that kind of stuff. Are these, uh, are these edible berries? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you think, Brock? Well, I don't know. I always have to ask. So, I'm not sure. so to do little berries, I'm just, I'm grabbing some red and I'm just going to do a series of small dots that it's basically like, um, like you just do like two, and then another two, and then you finish it off with like one at the top. So you kind of want it to start thick and then get narrow at the top. But it doesn't have to be exact like this. You can do three. You can do however many you want. You can make it, if you want it to be more full, then just do extra berries in there. And that's the first part. And we're just basically going to repeat that process all the way around. Um, so I'm, I've finished that little stem and I'm gonna start another one. I'm gonna grab my brown. And then following this line, and they don't have to touch. You see how I'm leaving a little bit of space. You can leave some space in there. I'm gonna follow this line. And usually my sections are like, I don't know, about two inches. And then another thing that you can do if you don't want it to be such a perfect circle and you want it to feel a little bit more full, just do a little bit more mini branches. You can have them all over. And remember, you can always go back in and add them. So if you're not really sure, you know, do your, do your branch and then as we get closer to the end of the wreath, you'll know some areas that maybe look a little sparse. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sparse. Um, and you can always add more leaves or do a berry bunch or, you know, a little mini branch there. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this project is because I feel like so many times we see something like super cute on print, Pinterest or, you know, and it's just, it's just something really simple, like a wreath with lettering in it to the point where it's just like, no, you guys can do this, you know, you guys can do this at home. So I thought it would be fun if we did a project where it's like maybe more seasonal and you can use for decor during that season because it's always fun to be able to hang your own artwork. Put this right next to my fox. Did you do the fox? My wife did. You're right. <laughs>
his wife did the fox. Her art is my art. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out so good. She did a really great job. And also, if you, um, if you have different colors at home, feel free to use whatever colors you want. This one I kept more in like the warms and the browns and the gold tones with the pink uh, pinch of red because that, that just reminds me of like Thanksgiving and fall. Um, but you know, it's your life. I'm excited to see the rainbow wreath when someone... <laughs> me too. Inevitably does, inevitably does a rainbow wreath. I can't wait. And you just, you're just going to keep on, keep on keeping on. Now, if you're feeling a little bit edgy, because we like to live on the edge here. <laughs> I said it. I said it, you guys. <laughs> you're just going to... <laughs> you don't have to follow the circle outline exactly. Maybe your branch is kind of coming around and you're like, these branches are looking too curvy. Well, then have it go straight off the paper, like straight off that Ooh. line. And then your next branch, you can start back on like right here. So feel free to like, if you're, if you're feeling brave, feel free to go off the circle line a little bit. And sometimes what I like to do is I'll just do the leaves first and then I'll go back in and do berries um, or you can do them simultaneously, whatever feels right. I also, you see how I'm kind of getting different values here? This one is a dark value, then a medium value, and a light value. And that's just because I like to fill my paintbrush with the color. And then I just kind of just keep using it until it runs out. I like having that variation. Um, for me, I think it just adds something to a painting when you have some dark spots and some light spots. So I just like to keep on going. And I'll probably just rinse this with water and keep on going. And then that way I have, it's not like so even because if, if the colors are so even, it's going to um, not have as much interest um, to the viewer. But if you have like darks and lights, they're like, wait, what's going on over there? What's that? You know, Brock, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm going to do some brown leaves in here. I'm just using some sepia. Do you think people can hear that ambulance? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Sorry. Our studio is on Main Street. Our so studio is on traffic. Main Street, so sometimes you hear things like yeah, that. Yeah, I realized that last night. I was like, what am I hearing? <laughs> A lot. Lots trucks, of tractors. tractors and trucks and ambulances. It's not a dangerous town. It's just an older town, right? Certainly. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Question away. So, as you can see, I didn't do any berries. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest I go off of here, or can I just add little red dots right there? Does it need a line? It doesn't have to have a line. No, see, like, like here, I don't have a line. I just did berries. Cool. Same with here. If you have room for a line, then do a little branch, but if you don't, then just put them there. Little berries. And I love, I don't know, I just think there's something about just doing tiny little red dots on things. Like when I do illustrations, even with florals, sometimes it's fun to just be like, because it's just a pop of color. It's just a great way to introduce color. And it's just simple, just little dots, you know? You guys, we're like halfway done with our wreath. You're doing great. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Is that a song? I'm sure it is. It's, it's, it's got to be, right? I definitely say that too. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we're so quiet is because all of these are tiny little leaves. Do you ever leave a little bit of a line to add a shadow? Uh, like on what? Like if that's an accident, do you think I should fill that in or just leave it? I would just leave it. Okay. I would just leave it. See, I <laughs> leave it alone. 
Brock, you're so good about that. I have a couple of those yeah. too. And I like I it. Like See how fine. there's little white spaces in between? Feel free to do that. Mix it up on your painting, you know? Now there is a way, since we're using round brushes, there is a way to do leaves using one brush stroke. And I can show you how to do that. I don't do it very often, but I do it sometimes. And um, in order to do that, you start off light pressure and then you push your paintbrush down and then you do light pressure again. Whoa. So it's just, and it takes some practice. Mm. That's okay. If you try it and it doesn't look right, just do that. Reshape it, fill it in, try again. Oh, it's because I have a smaller, no. So when I press down, I'm also kind of pushing my paintbrush on the, on the, its side mm. and then back up. And sometimes you have to reshape it too. Sometimes it comes out like so beautiful and sometimes it's like, it's a little wonky. But there's wonky leaves. But there's it. wonky leaves, okay. And this is just feeling a little too like even for me, a little too uniform. So I'm gonna start introducing um, little branches with maybe baby leaves and try and fill in some of this space and break up that uniform look. I want it to feel a little bit more full. And sometimes you can do like another little um, mini branch, like going along next to it. Like almost like, let's say this branch is out into two. And then add leaves on that. And what that's gonna do is just gonna give you a fullness. It's just gonna make it seem a little bit more filled. Oh, that's next level. And you just work around the leaves that are already there. Yeah, see? Just three little changes, but already this is... Oh, you okay, Brock? Bless you. Bless <laughs> me, he's close to the microphone. <laughs> and just keep on working your way down, around. Now the reason why we're, this is all single directional, like all of these leaves are going the same circular direction. Um, if you wanted to split that up, maybe you could start at the middle and have the left side go this way and the right side go this way and then it meets. Uh, it's whatever you want to do. I kind of like the continuous direction, but it's just whatever you want to make, you know? And you can maybe do one that's continuous and then you can do another one that's different directions and you can see which one you like better. And for the tinier leaves, it's the same thing, just smaller. So you just gotta be, you know, soft, really soft. Rock, tell us a joke. Do you have one? Oh, uh, hmm. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Are you gonna Google one? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe see if there's any fall jokes or leaves or something. Sorry. It's okay. Oh, fall jokes. I don't want jokes about people falling. <laughs> My daughter, um, first of all, if you guys have little kids, uh, they like to tell jokes and it's so funny because they just do the same jokes over and over again because it's the only ones they know. But they want you to be surprised every time you hear it. And it's so yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter will tell me like the same joke like three times in a row and you just you know you just kind of laugh and 
tell them how funny they are. And when they're really little and they just start saying like, knock, knock, they don't understand the premise of the joke. And so then they just start saying like, like my Ella, who's uh, six now, but when she was like three or four, she'd be like, knock, knock. And we'd be like, who's there? And she's like, leaves. And I'm like, leaves who? And she's like, tree. And then she would just start laughing. <laughs> like it was the funniest thing in the world. And I'm like, why? But then you start laughing because you're so entertained by <laughs> what they're doing. It's pretty funny. Okay, I found a good one. Okay, I'm ready. I like this one. I'm ready. What's the ratio of a pumpkin circumference to its diameter? Already oh not interested. Oh boy. Math. <laughs> You're talking to two artists right now. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. That's a good one. That's a good one. Fair. I don't think it's good that right when you started talking about like circumference and radius, my brain was like, Both of us. nope. <laughs> Listen, you can be an artist and good at math also. That's just not who I am. I mean, you guys know I tried to do shapes one time and I totally messed that up. <laughs> How does an elephant get out of a tree? Um, the trunk? Uh, no. Oh, it he sits on a leaf and waits till autumn. And waits <laughs> till the leaf will fall off. <laughs> oh. I feel like my answer was funnier. <laughs> It definitely was. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea of an elephant sitting on a leaf waiting for it to fall out of a tree. <laughs> you know what? That is a good, that's a little great picture to have in your mind. <clears throat> um, my daughter's not old enough to tell me bad jokes yet, so. It's, it's coming. How old is Bentley now? Uh, she's over a year old. Yeah. It's coming before before you know it. She doesn't even talk yet at all, so. She doesn't say any words at all? She says, ah, eh. Okay, you know what, that was the same for my Luna. I've got a lot to look forward to that. You do. Luna's great. Because my Luna's a little bit crazy, but I love her. Did she get her hot dog costume? She did. Oh. I asked my three-year-old what she wanted to be for Halloween, and she's like, a hot dog. <laughs> so we Do you eat hot dogs a lot? No. <laughs> she doesn't love, she loves hot dogs and cheeseburgers. She loves them. She'll come into a room, she'll just walk in and be like, cheeseburger, hot dog, and then walk out. And that's all she says. And it's just like, so I asked her what she wanted to be, and she's like, a hot dog. And I was like, okay. So we have a great hot dog costume for her, and when we showed it to her, she died. Oh. She loved it so much. It was so funny. What are the odds? One time I was putting her to bed, and she's like, she, she doesn't totally talk in full sentences, and she was like, uh, Mom, um, I wanna talk. But you know, like a kid, like, Mom, wanna talk. And I'm like, what do you wanna talk about? And she's like, cheeseburgers. And I'm like, what about cheeseburgers? She's like, eating cheeseburgers in my bed. <laughs> like, you wanna eat cheeseburgers in your bed? She's like, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, you gonna, you know what, me too. <laughs> I get it. Girl, I get you. So, that's a little- white spacing your leaves on purpose? That's a little taste of blue. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, on, on a couple of them. Wow, wow. Cause we're Trying fancy. Trying it out. We're fancy, we're living on the edge. <laughs> Again, yes. twice, twice. twice. <laughs> <laughs> way too much edge in this video there's way too much edginess going on but i feel like you can handle it nicole got you're it doing good on it on it <laughs> i'll try and i'll weave it in weave it in there's so many so many places you can go with that And you might be asking, should I do the leaves on the inside of the circle or on the outside of the circle? Do both. Mix it up, you know? Basically, wherever there's just a little bit of room. Now, I'm gonna turn mine a little bit here because it's easier for me to do that. Now, remember, if your other part of your wreath is still wet, um, don't rest your wrist in it. 
I've done that so many times you guys don't even know. So if you're afraid of doing that, let it dry or just kind of keep your arm up. And don't lift your paper. And don't lift your paper if it's dripping wet to the side because it will drip. I learned that in the leaf <laughs> tutorial we did. <laughs> Actually, I learned that years ago, but I somehow forgot. I love how your leaves are like skinny and long. I think it gives Mine? it like, yeah, I think it gives it like a loose, like a soft movement to them. And I think I went a little wild over here. These were very perfect. And then I was like, oh. I like, I actually like this part a little bit better, personally. Playing with it. And you guys can mix it up if you want some of your leaves to be a little bit longer and swoopy, and then some of them to be like squatty. Nothing wrong with squatty. having both. I kind of have more squatty leaves, but that's okay. And for that added dimension, don't forget to drop in that dark brown on some of these at the base. And this is, if you were to do this in green, this is real. it's really fun to play with. Like you can do drops of yellow or you can do drops of blue or brown in the leaves. And those are all gonna give different tones of green, which is pretty, pretty and fun. Your wreath is almost going full circle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm just so excited for this. Me too. I'm kind of nervous to do the lettering if I'm being honest, cause it's not, I just no. have a really hard time um, putting things like in the center. Mm. You know what I mean? Like lining it up and um, that kind of stuff. So if you guys are nervous to do lettering, I am too. We're in the same boat here, but it's good to try new things and give it a shot. And remember, if you mess it up, it's just paper, throw it away. Or, you know, keep it, put it in the back of a drawer and do another one. Give it to your mom, she'll appreciate it. Your mom would probably like it no matter what you make. Hopefully. Okay, so my, I finished my wreath and then now is where you kind of like take a moment and be like, okay, where, what can I add to this? So for me, this space right here is feeling a little bit empty and like in this area. So I'm just going to add another little branch kind of coming up here. And maybe you're like, no, mine feels pretty good. Well then don't add this if you don't need it. And I, I just feel like I still need something else. I'm gonna do another, maybe berries over here that stick out a little bit more. Ooh, that stem was thick. That's okay. The also great thing about doing wreaths are when there's a lot of different things going on. Like this stem was a lot thicker than I wanted it to be, but when this is all done, nobody is going to even notice that one thick stem. So don't get hung up on one single mistake or two single mistakes because in the end, when something is totally done, people aren't even gonna notice it. They don't pay attention, they just see the entire thing. And that's where it's kind of hard as an artist because you know where they are, right? Because you created it. But give yourself a little bit of forgiveness and move on. Mm, that got deep. That did get deep. I feel like a lot of what we talked about can just apply to life, you know? Give yourself a little bit of forgiveness, move on. I'm Sarah Cray, I'm your guru. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Yeah, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, maybe another one over here. Just a little. And you can keep going until this thing like is so thick. It's up to you. It's up to you to stop it. Or to let it keep going. I think this is looking good. I kind of feel like this is still like a really tight circle. I kind of liked how on um, the first one I did, I have some that go way far out of the circle. 
So I'm going to do a couple of those. Can I put that in frame and show them? Oh yeah, sorry, I forget, you can't see that. Um, so I have some here that are going pretty far outside of the circle, like on the sides here and a little bit on the top. And I'm, I feel like I'm missing that in this painting. So I'm going to do a couple of those. So maybe like right here, I'm going to go farther out. I'm going to do it on the other side because usually if you do something on one side, you kind of want to make it feel even on the other. So I need to go a little bit outside the frame. Like algebra. <laughs> is that how algebra is? Is that how that works? <laughs> is that how that works? <laughs> Last time I took a math class was literally 10 years ago. I'm nervous for when my kids get older and do math. <laughs> like, I'm going to be like, can you help me balance this equation? Uh, no, no. The, the answer is no. no. I'm going to be doing a lot of Googling. Okay, and I want another one reaching out. Sorry. It's okay. Kind of over here. And maybe you do a mini branch and then you do another little branch off your mini branch. You can do that. There are no rules that you're breaking by doing that. Yeah. Oh, already I feel so much better about it. Okay. Ooh, got a little wild right there. <laughs> Let's bring it back a little. I like it. I like the wildness of it. <sighs> okay. I heard that. Oh man. What? I need to balance it. What? Let me see. It's a little bottom heavy. Now I gotta little make it a little top heavy. Yeah, okay, let's 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 look at this. So if you're not sure, it's always a good idea to you can either like hold it up away from you <laughs> if it's not dripping and be like, okay, where is it looking like it's coming in too much? So if I'm looking at this, I feel like it might be a good idea to introduce something over here and then to do that it. and then we'll we'll see where Deal. else we need to balance it. And I should do that on mine too. It's always a good idea to take a step back see where it needs a little bit if it because this is where composition is really just kind of looking at the general shapes of things and how they sit on your paper so while nicole was looking at that she noticed that the bottom of her wreath was feeling really thick and heavy which then is going to change the shape of it so just take a second see where it's maybe coming in too much or going out too much and figure out what you can do to balance it so it feels like more of an even circle because the other thing I can show is that what happens, mm -hmm. they can see that, right? Yeah. Is my eye, it's directing my eye this way. So I like to think of it, obviously this is a circle. Mm -hmm. But if like you were telling me to balance it out here, it mm -hmm. feels more like, okay, my eye's gonna go here and then mm -hmm. here and then maybe something I would do something here, over here too. Instead of my eye going that way. And then it's gonna keep, because the good thing about a wreath is it makes your eye keep going around. And um, so when you're, when you're painting this, Pay attention to where your eye is drawn to. And then if it's only drawn to one spot, see where you can put those other spots in your painting that would make them want to keep going around. Oh yeah, that's already, that's already feeling good. Good. Feeling good and even. Yeah. And that just takes, that just takes practice and it takes um, sometimes what I like to do is I'll paint something, I'll set it up, and then I'll walk away for a few minutes, maybe even overnight, and I come back to it the next morning, and I look at it from far away, and then instantly I can see, okay, where is it looking kind of off? Or, you know, does this feel even, that kind of thing. So take the time to do that. Also, berries just fill things. Yeah. Berries are great fillers and pops of color. And tasty. And but take not these berries. No, don't lick these. Mm, better. Yeah, better for sure. 
Still could do a little bit more, but I think I'm good. I think maybe just like here, maybe a little. I don't know, something right here, maybe? I actually don't mind that. Okay, so here you think? Mm-hmm. Because I think if you put something here too, then you're making it like too, one, too evenly thick all the way around. I like that it kind of cuts back in. You know what mm. I mean? Because it gives that, that, maybe? Okay. that kind of like, um, almost like a cadence or something. Yeah. Maybe just one. Look at me and my words today. Wow. I'm remembering them. Usually I sit there for a minute. I'm like, Brock, what's the word? And I don't know. Either. And he was like, he's like this. And I'm like, no, that's not it. And then people will comment and be like, that's the word you're looking for. And I'm like, thank you. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm good. Okay, and then Nicole is going to talk about lettering and how to do that. So I'm a student now. It'll be perfect because then we'll let it dry. So okay. you want to let it dry because like we were saying, you don't want to smear it with your hands. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do first actually is I want you guys all to experiment and we're going to call it thumbnail sketches because they're small, not literally the size of your thumbnail, but they're small. <laughs> um, so we can have the reference, would it help to have this out? Oh yeah, let's put that right there. Okay, so as you guys can see with lettering, there is no rule as far as what it needs to be, but I want the reason why we're doing thumbnail sketches is I want you to get all those ideas out in your head onto a paper, meaning you can see we incorporated some block lettering or more print, and then this is more cursive. So that wasn't my first try. I had to go through this process that I want you guys to go through on your own. So just get a piece of computer paper, scratch paper, whatever you have handy. If you like to work with pencil or pen, whatever works for you. Do you want to do it with me? Yeah, let me get a pen. Oh, okay, I have yeah. one right here. Let's do it together. <laughs> okay. We okay. can put that in the middle maybe. Okay. So what I want you to do is you can try with this first one. So. Again, really small, it doesn't need to be perfect. It can even be scribbles. But what the idea is, is I want you to experiment. So maybe it's block and then cursive. And then, or what if it's cursive and then maybe block right there? So it's kind of helping to see, because you don't know what you're working with. This G goes really low and it doesn't really make sense if I were to do it again to have things cut off like that, that doesn't mm. really make sense. Yeah. So maybe we choose, okay, maybe give is capitalize. I don't even technically, that is a technical. Oh, that is. Cursive Wait, G. Wait, is that a G or a D? A G, a D. Okay. Mm, dive. No, okay. Not that. <laughs> That's technical. Or okay. it could just be, well, okay. First, we're gonna go keep going to this. So because of that, we don't have anything going below the baseline. So then that would make more sense. And the baseline is just this line where the letter stops. Yes. So some letters go below the baseline and some of them stay above. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, technical school. We're not even gonna really go over that. Okay. I just wanted to show, yeah, the baseline is the bottom, like a base. Okay. The bottom of it. How do you, what I have trouble with is like, as you can see, my, the bottoms here doesn't, they like go off like this almost. Like it's harder for me to get a straight line on the base of my letters. Letters. Is there a trick that you can, is there, or is it just practice? So let's do that after. And then once okay. we choose that, do that. Okay. Let's go with a little bit more options. They want you to mix up like you were doing that's in capital. Um, Cause another thing I was going to say is maybe if you want to do a lowercase G, uh -huh. you can, and you, it bothers you that this kind of cuts off. What if we play with that and kind of curve it around? Oh, that's pretty. So that way you have, you can, oh, and I'm also just gonna take your idea. All your letters don't need to be at the same height, which is why I don't really want to focus, at least for oh. right now, on the baseline okay. or the height. Because um, as you can see, that that has some personality. That's yeah. cool. It um, makes it your own. Yeah. Or if you want, yeah, I love that. I just copied you. No, I love that. <laughs> It like a smile. <laughs> it does a little bit. Um, so kind of playing with us, I'm trying to think what other options we can play with. Um, oh, if you want to do block letters and maybe, so what we're looking at right here is you have this circle. So if it helps you, you can even draw little circles and draw your words within that. If okay. that helps, maybe that's the second step. Um, but I was gonna say, we can play with, if you actually want to fill out more, maybe give is really hot tall oh okay 
and maybe if you want to make banks in cursive but really tall and skinny, maybe you can play with that. Um, so that's why we're less focused on making it on a perfect line and more trying to figure out what variants you like. That's okay. fun. Or you can you can do this is my this is my art artness coming out is maybe you can do like oh <gasps> fun <laughs> you know you know let's yes, go crazy the here the entrance and the exit so what she's doing is yeah going like that yes give I wonder if you can do thanks mm hmm. So as you guys can see right here, what I'm trying to work with is I, this will kind of cross through all of that. Oh, like the Oh, teeth. so I like how you chose. That's why that makes, maybe this makes more sense to do it in block mm -hmm. rather than cursive because this kind of crosses through, which isn't bad, but That's my not bad. Eye, it's not bad. Just something to think about. Yeah. If you like that or not. But what's interesting about that is it's really, so we're thinking about it is that would get really wide mm -hmm. and you'd have a lot of. Oh, that's a lot true. more spot. So maybe it would be like with... this totally across and it would ignore mm -hmm. these parts. But that's when you can or, do like maybe embellishments or something. Totally. Or you curve this up here. So it's oh. that circle that we were talking about. Yeah, try that out. Yes. I love that. So this is why we're doing it in pencil first because we're experimenting and see what happens and every letter is going to give you a different options of things to play with. That's cool. I like how that um, goes up like that. I love that. And another thing is even looking at this one is if I were to do give thanks and we like that idea of mm -hmm. this also, you also with curse or with modern lettering, don't feel like you have to connect everything. Cause I see mm -hmm. this space right here and maybe mm -hmm. I love your thought of that. Mm -hmm. And maybe I do it where I curve it like that. Oh. And then I add little leaves oh, right there. Oh, I love that. And then maybe the T comes up. I don't yeah. know, something. Mm. Okay, okay. Playing with things like that. And well. then I like how you add, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. If you look at this, maybe this doesn't connect and this curves like, I don't know, something or another. <laughs> but yeah, this is what we want you to do is kind of take, give yourself some, a chance to experiment. I then... think the great thing about lettering is it's so unique to you, very similar to art where it's just like, there's not a wrong way to do it. Totally. And everybody is going to have their own, like, um, things that they lean towards and things that are maybe their nemesis, right? Like everybody has that in art and that kind of stuff where like you naturally want to do some things and you naturally don't go towards other things and like right. embrace that part of it and be like, that's just your handwriting and that's just what you do. And so like, yeah, for me, I, I really like um, like doing like long stretched out cursive and maybe I don't have to fight that if I don't want to. Totally. You know, like there's different, allow yourself to play and then allow yourself to be who you are in this, in this lettering. We're going to go over how to do this for the example, but feel free to make it your own. That's the whole point of this. And the other thing that I challenge you guys is to not think that this is just the way that I write. Cause yes, what you're saying is embracing what you are, but mm -hmm. then also not letting that hinder you and thinking, well, I have crappy handwriting, so mm -hmm. I'm not even going to give this a try. Cause mm -hmm. I think that's a stumbling. It's, it's a stumbling literal wall that people don't get through. And I'd rather challenge you guys to experiment and see what it is. And what's beautiful is you're working with a pencil and you're also working with watercolors. Yeah. And because you guys have been following along watercolors, you're already familiar with, um, so I challenge you to not think of this as my handwriting and this is an mm. art form just okay. like we're looking at it. Cause it's just like when you were drawing a leaf that doesn't technically look like a leaf and you mm -hmm. can get stumbled on that mm -hmm. and be so technical. So I'd rather you just express yourself. How okay. Works. So do okay. you have one that you want to, Oh, I like that's fun. I'm doing more. That one is Let's kind of probably a little bit more similar, that. which I think is probably I'm gonna, which one are you gonna do? I think we'll go through this and then maybe I'll, we each can show different ways. Maybe I'll do this and add some leaves to it. Okay, 
I'm gonna try and do how this one is. Okay, so when it comes to your final one. Should we move this out of frame maybe? Sure, yeah. Now what we're looking at is if you want and it freaks you out to go to this first one, what you can do is if you just have tracing paper, mm -hmm. what you can't, or I'm um, sorry, not trace paper, scratch paper, you can draw your really basic outline. Mm -hmm. And if you want to kind of more experiment and then give yourself a little bit more a chance to try it out okay. first, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of give yourself an eyeball or if you have the reference photo. Okay. Um, but what I would like you guys to do, it's, that's if you want to do that. Oh, brother. That's okay. That's okay. It happens. Maybe we add splatters. <laughs> well, that's what it's happens. Fine. <laughs> Dang. Okay. That's okay. Got a lot to go. So what we're looking at is now we're thinking about because you have this whole sphere inside, mm -hmm. you can choose to either like we were doing. Can I see that? This one. You can choose to either have it in the center or you can have it a lot bigger because if you're looking at us and thinking, well, that's a lot of white space. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to explain that white space is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think it allows this to breathe. It doesn't feel so uptight when things are so close to each other. It kind of feels constrained. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. So don't feel like you have to fill this whole thing. So you can decide. Mm -hmm. As far as if you want, if it freaks you out to go for it straight away, maybe you draw yourself a little bit of an outline. So since we have two lines, not an outline. A little oh, guideline. Okay. If, oh, that would make me feel better. Yeah. And then you can do Just that. because I know I have a problem where my lettering tends to like go off. Mm -hmm. So if I want to keep it Which is it fair because if you're straight, right, yeah, you might tend to write And like if you're afraid of even drawing a straight line, you can use a piece of paper. Just draw it really lightly. Oh, is that too high maybe? maybe and we can experiment. And that could even be the middle. It doesn't need to be the... You can play with that. So I'm using the straight edge of this paper because even sometimes my lines go crazy. Listen, it's fine. Okay. And then you can decide, okay, how about, so if we have, this is either you can go really math or you don't have to. Okay. We have four letters. Yeah. Actually it doesn't really work because this I is so, even if I was going to say, if we split this in half, mm. it, it's not even that perfect. Okay. So I don't want to get too technical because I'd rather you try it. Mm -hmm. But if that helps for your guideline, you're thinking, okay, and maybe it helps you to look at this and say, okay, I want my line to be, or my give is going to be that big. Oh, so you're basically just giving yourself like a little length and being like, I know that my letters need to fit on this part right. and you know that it's centered. Oh, that's a good Rather idea. Rather than just shooting in the dark, yeah. that could help. Some people, it also helps if you want to draw a, another line mm -hmm. and have it be the height. Okay. But again, I don't want you to get so focused because... I think I'll just do the bottom line and then like just the height see how different. that goes. Yeah. Okay. I just went ahead and measured on either side. That like would also help the center too. too. So I know it needs to be that long. And thanks. Yeah, that feels actually pretty good. Okay, try. Want to try that out? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying it. I'm still using my. Oh, you're gonna go for it? I'm. I'm just going. Okay. Is that okay? Well, you totally can. I don't know if that freaks people out. Okay. Because if you want, I was gonna show that you can lightly sketch in. Oh. Okay. But just keep in mind with watercolor, um, you will see. Yeah. You will see the pencil through it because watercolor is transparent. However, if you have a gray watercolor pencil. You can draw with that, and whenever water touches that pencil line, it automatically disappears. So if you want to sketch out this lettering and have it as the base using a gray watercolor pencil, then um, that's what I would probably do if I had one, because then you wouldn't see that line through the actual paint. Just a little tip for you guys. Or you do it in brown. You do the lettering in a darker color. So you do like what we did here, because you can't see it, right? Okay. And I lightly erase. Okay. I'm just trying to help people if they don't, if it freaks them out to do it first. Do you know what? These people are brave. You guys can handle this. I've seen what you can paint, okay? I know, I've seen it too. <laughs> I just want people to not try. So, there's options. There's... Whatever floats your boat. Okay. So, I'm going to do more. But you should try it. Go for it. Do you want to okay. do it? Yeah, I'm going to like... 
Also, you're giving yourself a very basic outline. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. Love it. Okay. Maybe. And then you can always adjust it too. This is the, the good thing about a sketch is you can be like, I actually want my G line to be up here. Mm -hmm. um, and where's my, let me, I'm like, where's my reference? I gotta look at stuff. And then this is kind of like angled, right? So it's like. A gray pencil, the watercolor pencil would be perfect. I didn't even know that was a thing. It is, there are things as, such things as watercolor pencils that you basically, they're like colored pencils and then you can add water to them. Okay, and then, you know, lightly erase. Yeah, very lightly erase. Similar to how we did our circle outline, huh? Yeah. Okay. So then another, if you, so we went, again, we went from little pencil sketches to if you want to help it make it a little bit bigger to give you a guideline, and then we're going for it. I'm, I'm just going. So when it comes to doing the letters, you can choose, like, Sarah always goes over is you can play with pressure. So you can decide if you want to have a thick give or a thin give. So I feel like mine is probably a little bit on the thicker side. In a good or bad way. I like it. I like that it's thicker because then I can adjust it, right? Like if I, if I feel like if it's too thin, then like if it kind of goes off course, you're like, oh shoot. But if it's a thick line, you can start thin and then like add to it maybe. I don't know. I'm just... I'm so nervous. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And I'm just using my round two. You guys can use whatever brush. Nicole is gonna use a little bit of a smaller brush. I think that's a size zero. A zero. So I'm gonna show, so you can show the thick and I'll show it being a thin option and what you can play with. Okay, oh my gosh, I'm so, Whoa! I'm so happy with that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep going, you guys. I love it. I'm just using yellow ochre for this, but if you wanna switch colors up, you're totally welcome to. Okay, okay, and here's the cursive part. G. So I tend to like to use a thinner brush because the bristles are just a little bit shorter. So if you look at this versus this, again, it's all personal preference. I tend to like the shorter bristles because um, I feel like I have a little bit more control. But you'll, you guys will see the difference in it. Yes! I gotta catch up to her. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I noticed that like on the back part of my lettering, it's a little bit thicker and my front part's a little bit thinner. What's that? Uh, Nicole? Yes? Do you just put your head on back? <laughs> oh man, is my hair been in that the whole time? Not the whole time. Okay, it's, it's because I'm so over, over it. Yeah. I'm thickening up my line a little bit so it matches the back, the back letters. Oh, I love how thin your give is. Well, I was gonna, it helps so, if you look at this, and I can kind of tell that there's a little bit more space in here. Can you see that? So this is- Oh, like between here and then yeah. between here? Yeah, I can see that. If that happens to you, what you can do is then you can make it thicker. So what if oh. I make this line a little bit thicker over here, uh -huh. and then- Maybe on that left that side, side yeah, that just a little bit. Okay. And then on this left side, make it thicker. So then it kind of fills that space up. So this will help you see that it's less intimidating and there's ways to kind of fill in the space if you do it once and you realize, oh, there's a little bit too much space. And then on this side, I won't want to add it to the left side because I don't want to have make that space smaller. Okay. So what if you add it to the right side? So that you still oh, have so a, you still have that same space. And you still have the same thickness of the line. Maybe this gets extended just a little bit more. Okay, so talk me through what are you doing with your cursive? So Come I just hand. went and thickened it back up because like I noticed that my T and my H was really thin and then back here I had some really thick lines. So I just went over it and thickened it so it was like similar thickness. Yes. All the way. I love it. And I think I'm actually gonna thicken the E lines a little bit too. And then when it comes to modern lettering and calligraphy, the, there is a variance with thin and the thick stroke. 
Okay. So you can either choose like you did to do that on purpose, or I'm going to show an example where it's all the similar um, stroke size. Okay. So you can play with that. So I, again, like I was saying, I tend to like to use a smaller brush and you can mm -hmm. see that, tell me if my head's in the way. I am very lightly just grazing actually. Mm -hmm. It's okay if you miss. So then the other thing I want to show is that you also don't have to perfectly be on that straight line. Okay, you can. We can play with it. So maybe that comes down. TH. So you can tell I'm very lightly. And is it just because I feel like your thin lines are really smooth? Is that just the practice of doing it over and over, like that light touch and still having it smooth? So I think it, yes, that's a great question. If you do want to do thin and you want to start out, maybe it is just practicing doing this motion. Okay. The other thing that's a little bit different, which um, is a warm up thing, maybe you can do if you want to keep going with lettering, is with watercolors, even when you, we were doing the thin lines, mm -hmm. sometimes you have it where your hand's a little bit levitated. Yeah. So what's a little bit different about lettering that I want you all to try, again, like we've been talking about, everyone's grip is a little bit different, so mm -hmm. I don't, we're not going to talk about grip right now. Okay. But what might help is have you tried um, grounding your hand mm -hmm. and then doing the movement. Oh. So instead of this, because even though I've done lettering for so long, my hand is shaky doing okay. that. And then in art, I teach them to lift up their hand, but that's because we're making long, thin lines. Right. But since we're staying right here, it's okay to, to plant your hand. Yeah, because the thought is we're not doing technical cursive, we're doing it all in one stroke really fast. What you're doing is you're taking it line by line. So maybe stop. Back. Okay. So maybe we'll do stop here and then you can stop so you oh. also don't feel like you have to do it each letter by letter so okay. try that and then lift up and then ground your hand and then go for it and maybe stop and then maybe you, you can even get a little bit more ink if you want to have a little more color and then maybe do does that feel like you have a little more control? Yeah. And you can see how beautiful that line is. Yeah, it's like staying even. Yeah. So those are things you can experiment with. I'm going to keep going. But it's fun to see the different options that you can play with. But that was a great question. And then I think I'm going to fill, just to experiment, play, fill like we were doing. Fill this spot. And if you do stop, and I couldn't, my hand was cramping, so I couldn't do that whole stroke. Uh -huh. What you can do is just overlap and then keep going. Okay. Instead of starting right at where you ended, because then you might oh, see yeah, it. Oh, yeah, because then you might have an uneven line. Yeah. Okay. And okay. So I might stop there. And then even looking at this, I still haven't, so I do the T at the very end mm -hmm. because it's a chance for me to fill the space because mm -hmm. I can kind of tell it, it's got a little bit cramped over here. Mm -hmm. So what if I really play with, maybe I make this a little bit longer than normal. And then that way it feels a little bit more centered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's um, a way to kind of do it rather than feeling like it needs to be perfect on your first try. Yes. It's just like we were doing what we were doing with here is kind of figuring out, okay, what can you fill in? Yeah. And then I was going to show you one thing. Yeah. So on that spot, how you can see, like I was saying, you can see that you picked up a little mm -hmm. bit more brown. Mm -hmm. You can totally go back over it and just fill that in if that bothers so you. So it feels like a more natural transition instead of like you clearly picked up a new color right, right. there. Right. Okay. And that's why I love watercolors is that like... They blend together. Totally. So that just, that little change helps a lot. And I love how you went from brown, then you mix it up and you change it a little bit. You guys, we did it. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Yay. I love how they turned out and I can't wait to see how yours turns out because it's going to be different. You're welcome to go off our example if that feels more safe to you. But like Nicole said, feel free to play. Do those little thumbnail sketches. This is where you can kind of make it your own. So I would love to see it. And Nicole, thank you so much for teaching us how to do this. Yeah. I have a strong interest in lettering. It's not a, a skill that I have yet, but I want to learn. And if you want to learn, let us know. Um, 
And if you post it, share it on Instagram, Let's Go Make Art. If you just want the single kit, if you don't have the subscription, you can go to letsmakeart.com. You can buy this Give Thanks kit by itself and paint it and have it, you know, in your home for Thanksgiving. And um, if you want to join our Facebook group, that's a really supportive community of people who are beginning watercolorists. It's Let's Make Art Together. You share your work, people comment on it, and it's just a really lovely space. So that's it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're good. Bye. All right. Thanks.